On tonight's Common Ground segment, we talk about the border crisis with a pair of mayors. Mayor Don McLaughlin is from Uvalde, Texas, and Mayor Joel Villarreal is from Rio Grande City, Texas. Mayors, thanks for being here. Uh, Mayor Villarreal, uh, first to you. How do you see the border situation? Uh, President Joe Biden just went down there, uh, visited just a week ago. Uh, but there's, there is a crisis, and a lot of those cities and towns are feeling it. How do you see it? Well, first of all, we have to recognize that we do have a crisis, and I'm glad that at this point the president was able to work his way to, to a border communities. However, for decades, our broken immigration system has been on full display for the rest of the world to bear witness that uh, we as a nation have failed to prioritize immigration. And both political parties have failed to deliver for the American people relative to immigration and border security. Now, you see, and this is one of the important premises here, central to this entire debate on immigration is uh, the simple yet convoluted premise that uh, border security and immigration are critical to the, the health and well-being of all Americans. And in fact, and that's one of the things that we fail to see is that in some cases, we have immigration on one end, we have border security on the other, and we fail to see that both are important for pursuing the interests of the American public. Mm -hmm. And that is critical, and we must address both immigration and border security. And I cannot stress that enough, because we, for the last several decades, and by the way, we've had a crisis under every president for the last several decades. Right, both That's sides. been under every president, exactly, both sides. And that's one of the things that we must continue to stress that we might have a we must have a bipartisan solution for our broken immigration system, which, by the way, yeah. border security is absolutely critical. And we must exercise caution against our global enemies exploiting our broken immigration right. system to inflict pain on Americans. Mayor McLaughlin, and I want to get you to weigh in here. Um, and, and before you do, I want to play the governor of Texas, uh, his reaction to the president's visit. To Mayor V. Real's point, there are a lot of people calling for bipartisan solutions, but it clearly is a partisan moment. Uh, take a listen to Governor Abbott. He was re receiving uh, a sanitized review of what was going on on the border, and, and I pleaded with him uh, to go talk to uh, the ranchers, thousands of ranchers along the border whose lives are being completely disrupted. So, Mayor McLaughlin, how do you see it? React to Mayor V. Real as well. Well, first, I agree with him that the immigration system is broken here in the United States. And, you know, it's a shame that we have two parties that can't sit at the table. Uh, neither one of them is going to get 100% of what they want. But we do have a broken system. And I agree with what Governor Abbott said. They sanitized the border for a week before President Biden got to El Paso. He didn't see what we see every day. He didn't see what the ranchers in South Texas are going through or the communities of Del Rio or Eagle Pass. That are just overwhelmed with these people. I mean, there has to be a, a solution, and neither party wants to sit at the table and do it. It's got to be my way or the highway, and, and that's just not going to work anymore. We need to come to common ground and come up with a solution that works for everybody. Yeah. Mayor V. Real, when we talk in Washington about big solutions, comprehensive immigration reform, uh, it really gets messy, and it suddenly dies on Capitol Hill. We've seen it multiple times. <clears throat> do you think they can start around the edges and things that they could do and pass now that would help you individually as two mayors in these towns? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what is the common ground? And I'm sure that both parties agree that immigration and border security are important. And, and how do we address that? I mean, let's start with common ground. So is it possible? Yes. Unfortunately, we haven't. And that's one of the things we must continue to drive and hold our, our elected officials accountable. All our politicians, neither side, by the way, let, let's agree with this. Neither party has delivered immigration reform in over 30 plus years. And there's a reason for that. And this, there, it is this political divide that is unnecessary because at the end of the day, it benefits America to address it from a point of view that we can have immigration and we can have border security. And it starts with, and by the way, no mayor or governor in America should bear the burden for a broken immigration system without the federal financial resources that are necessary to better manage the flow of migrants. Yeah. And uh, I know that uh, Mayor Adams is, is uh, calling on the federal government to to provide more resources. And, and that is absolutely true. But again, this is not 
a nonpartisan issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mayor McLaughlin, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. You obviously are dealing with the immigration situation, uh, but everything from Uvalde, how your community is uh, is bouncing back uh, after the, the shooting and, and beyond. Well, I mean, you know, we are bouncing back. I mean, it's something that, that uh, we'll never get over. We'll get through it. Uh, the families will never get over it, but we'll get through it. But, I mean, again, here we go with the, the coyotes and the pursuits, uh, through our community, you know, prior to the, to that tragic day in May, that, that particular school had been on lockdown 50 times from bailouts and pursuits where they bail out by the schools. And right now we're right back to the same old thing. The pursuits come in, they get out, bail out by the schools. We have to put the schools on lockdown. I mean, you know, we shouldn't have to be dealing with this day in and day out. Uh, it's, 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 it's wrong. It's a tragedy. Your view, Ral, when I was talking about sure. specifics on, you know, besides getting to the table and agreeing on border security and immigration, they have a hard time doing that, uh, on the big picture here. <laughs> uh, and, and it's, it takes leadership and it just hasn't been there. Every time they do it, they go to their corners and they keep fighting. Are there smaller things that they could take a bite of the apple that would help you all on the ground? Yes. Let's start off with uh, with having the federal financial resources to border communities. Same thing with law enforcement, to provide them all the resources necessary to make sure they do their jobs. And at the same time, let's keep this in mind about immigration. Immigration it benefits America. However, immigration must benefit America for it to remain viable. Otherwise, it would simply be untenable. So, But it goes back to the providing the federal financial resources that are necessary. Now, Keep this in mind, when it comes to border policies, they are extremely fickle because these policies flow directionally with the winds of change of White House administrations. And it is an, it's unfortunate because we lack stability and consistency in the enforcement and execution of border policies. Because a new White House administration comes in, they might change the border policies. And what are, where does that leave all these brave men and women of CBP where the proverbial, tell me again, what is it that we're doing this year certainly applies to border policies. At some point, we need to make sure that we have a strategic or strategic border policies that go across the board and are consistent, regardless of which administration is in office. Mm -hmm. Mayor McLaughlin, uh, you heard Mayor Villarreal mention uh, New York City Mayor, Mayor Eric Adams uh, speaking out about the immigration issue and, and obviously the buses of migrants being taken from your state uh, to New York, other states as well. Uh, here's a little clip from Mayor Adams talking about that. Our cities are being undermined and we don't deserve this. Migrants don't deserve this. And the people who live in the cities don't deserve this. Understand, we're trying to go for something that's nonpartisan, but for Republicans who look at this issue, they see irony in that a, a New York City mayor that is a sanctuary city uh, is speaking out about this in this way. And that's one of the reasons they, they did this move of, of busing people from the border cities to other cities that are sanctuary cities uh, to make that point. Your thoughts on that move? Well, I mean, look, but it, it needed to be done. It should have been done two years ago uh, sooner because now everybody's talking about the border because it's hitting home. It's hitting in New York City where we've had to deal with this for the last three years. Uh, you know, and now all of a sudden, you know, like in Uvalde, Texas, when they talk about dropping 180 people a day in Uvalde, Texas, what am I going to do with 180 people? I don't have the resources. I don't have the place to keep them, the place to feed them or do anything. And what have they got? 17, 18,000 that come to New York and, and they think the sky's fallen. I mean, I'm sorry for them. Uh, you know, it's not right what we're doing to these people. But I mean, we're, we're releasing all these people in our country right now and we don't even give them the right to work. That's the first and foremost thing we'll do. At least give them the right to work, give them a number. Then we can track them when it's time for the hearing to come forward. We know where they are. Mayor Real, Pierre Real. Absolutely. And we do need a, a coordinated federal response. If we're going to allow individuals to come into the country, we need to have a federal response as far as where they're going to be located. Where are the NGOs in this? Are they going to be allowed to work? Because at some point, 
it, it's so difficult for communities to prepare or to set up budgets for, for these type of expenses. We don't have the resources to sustain large numbers of individuals here in our communities. Now, for us, the majority of people are transient. They don't stay here in Rio Grande City or the Rio Grande Valley. However, I feel for those mayors in other communities that have to deal with the, the impact that immigrants that are, not, that are not able to work or are not allowed to work, for example, or don't have the resources, how are they going to make ends meet? And at the same time, again, we have limited budgets. I don't have the budget of a New York City, for example, but yet they too are having difficulty with providing for the uh, needs of, of uh, immigrants. So going back to that, we need to, if we're going to allow them to come into the country, we need to make sure that this, this, it is a coordinated effort and at the same time providing the opportunities to work because at the end of the day, they are here to work. They're, mm -hmm. they're here to be or to pursue the American dream, this idea that individuals rise above their circumstances in life. And again, that's regardless of what administration, whether you believe that immigration, uh, and, and by the way, it goes back to this whole concept of comprehensive immigration reform goes back to, okay, how do we address our asylum laws? How we, do we address our immigration laws? Our visa programs, for example, Visa overstays account for almost half of the population living in the U.S. illegally. Now, we average close to a million visa overstays annually. Multiply mm -hmm. that times two, three, four, five, six years or whatever, you know, and at some point, are we addressing that too? And that goes back to comprehensive immigration reform is addressing all of it in its entirety. And by the way, also, of course, border security and what are we going to do there yeah. and uh, providing all these uh, resources as well to border communities. I was the chief White House correspondent in the Bush administration when President Bush, George W., tried to uh, get comprehensive immigration reform with the juice that he had with Republicans controlling the House and the Senate, and it just fell short. It just did not get done, and, and there were a number of reasons why. But uh, you're right to say Democrats and Republicans in administrations have failed on this front, and it's become a major, major issue. Last word, uh, Mayor McLaughlin, and, and that is, do you think that the the election, the midterm, had an effect on dealing with this issue uh, quicker? Do you think that the administration maybe didn't want to talk about that issue because they sensed it was a, a vulnerability? Obviously, this visit happens after the midterm elections. Um, how, how do you see that? Obviously, politics factors into a lot of things. Sure. I, I mean, no. you talk to either party, none of them really want to address what was going on at the border. I mean, they all come down and they come see us and different things, but they don't really go to the forefront of where it's at. They want to talk to us and they want to rattle the saber that we're going to do this or do that. And I think that the midterms, uh, you know, by sending these migrants to these other cities, brought it to the forefront. And it did become an issue in some of these uh, elections and that, that people are finally talking about it. You know, this, this it, as Mayor uh, Villarosa said, they're not they don't want to stay in Uvalde, Texas. They want to go on to a big city and go somewhere else and do it. But what do we do with them in the meantime when we have them there? And I think that that it most definitely was an issue in the midterms. I mean, whether it was red or, or blue, however it turned out, this is a this is a problem that affects all of us as Americans. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent. What's going on on our southern border affects each and every one of us, and it's coming to a city near you very soon if we don't do something about it. Mayor McLaughlin, uh, Mayor Villarreal, we really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming on Common Ground. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much for having us. You can see Common Ground on the Brett Bear podcast, uh, and you can also see the all-star panel there. We'll see you every week.